What's up, y'all? We have a couple of uh, two or three or 15 antiques that we're working on, and uh, we're gonna do a video. Hey, on a couple of them, actually, a couple of them being the same thing that is these guys. Look at this. Two, two. It's got this little privacy lock up top. Boop. And then a key operated. I want to clarify things here. This is called a surface mount lock. See, it just kind of attaches to the surface of the door. This is a, would be called a lipped surface mount. See, it kind of goes on the edge of the door. It's got a little lip and then it's still, still surface mount. There's no such thing as a rim mount mortise lock, just to point that out. Mortise locks are cut into the door rim mounts or surface mount locks are cut or are set on the door those were sent in to get keys made for them so let's take a look at them hey look at look at these suckers I've already already made a key for this uh it used a really it's got a really big hole and it has to have a stop and the only key blank I, i'm not fond of these lead shoulder blanks but that's the only one the biggest one that i had without doing a lot of fabrication to an existing key, but it's kind of an is what it is thing on that one. Got that die and it kind of goes like that around the edge of a door. Uh, but then these we've got to also make keys for. We can see that we have a, uh, a warden and they, they would go on a door either which way. It could be handed and you know, go this way, this kind of door, this way for this kind of door or even flip it upside down for that kind of door. But both of these came in handed the same way and we can see a problem right there. That's not supposed to happen. This one has a positive clip and that one needs to be fixed as well. So we'll take that apart and take a look at it. And um, we see the two wards are on the opposite side so this one is on this side on the right hand side this one's on the left hand side of the key blank so what you can do is uh if you, as long as you have a thin enough key it'll go in there so these are actually operated from both sides of the door so if it's on flight on this side of the door you've got the thickness of the door whenever you're making keys for these if you're not actually on site at the door you do need to get the thickness of the door because you'd have to have a long enough shoulder of a key, which we're going to go look at here. Now, again, these are called bit keys. Barrel keys have the hollow on the end right there. Bit have the little thing sticking off. This is a pre-cut key. You can usually, you know, sometimes you can take these little pre-cuts and, and get them in there and, and like wiggle them around. And sometimes they'll work. Uh, but see, one thing, the big thing about this is see how... So yeah, that's allowed to go all the way through. So that wouldn't work because when you're trying to, from the other side of the door and you're pushing it through, you'd have to be real careful. So number one, we need a key blank with a wide shoulder right there. Uh, and if we look at this one, which is also a pre-cut, this is the 3B. Again, it, it's, it, it's allowing it to go past that ward because the blank is thin enough. If we were to take one of these, which has this fat on it, we see it would work perfectly. In fact, we did that before we found out that the, uh, okay, so this is for the, for the other side, so it's not gonna work on this one, but uh, see so you have to cut a, uh, cut a channel down the, the edge to pass that if we were just talking about one. Since the customer has two, we're gonna make it the same key. We're actually gonna use uh, one of these. Uh, and we could use maybe one of these and you know cut it down, but again, see? See, it, it just is allowed to go all the way through. So I went through all my keys and I also measured it. The door they're putting this on is pretty thick. I did go through some of my older, longer keys, which I'm running very, short on and I found that the Taylor, beautiful Taylor, number 563, which is most likely not made. Look at the size of that shoulder. 
Uh, but we do have to do a lot of modifying on it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this so we know what we're looking at, but we basically will know how far we need to cut it down by looking at this. So we can trace a rough outline uh, and get it cut down on the grinder to pass down into it before we start cutting anything else it needs. And it will need other stuff, and we're gonna go ahead and take it apart to see why this guy is not staying in, not, doesn't have a, uh, a catch to it like the other one. Again, it, it may spring apart, so just be careful there. All right, so let's double check this. What's going to happen is this is going to spring apart on us if we're not careful. This part right here likes to jump out. Uh, so basically what, what, is, what is missing right here, there's, a, there's just a flat piece of metal that goes in here and it's bent into kind of an angle. So the middle of it pushes up against this guy, which makes gives it that snick. Nick, nick on each side. So we need to find a uh, flat piece of like spring steel, cut it down to size and just put it in there and, and then bend it a little bit. But other than that, everything is functional looks like. We're going to zoom in a little bit more and take a look at the key that we're going to be using. We can also see some inner wards there. So once we get the key cut down for it to pass through, then we have to deal with these little side wards, much like this key should work. Let's see, do, 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 do. If we were able to use that key, that's what that's what that that lets happen is it gets it lets it go past that. And we can see actually the, this whole thing is actually kind of a ward itself. Like we've got one big ward right here, and then uh, and then the other little ones. So that has to be taken into account. It's not just the thickness of this; it's also the thickness of that. And on the inside as well, we see we see it's raised up. So what we'll do is we'll mark out, uh, and then it's just a one lever. But again, you do have to you do have to cut these down to fit some of these one lever guys. And it looks like it needs to raise up about to right there. We see, you know, that needs to go up to about right there. Uh, and it would be right in the center of the blank, and then that lets you use the rest of the blank to push it forward. So that's how that works. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just start rough forming the key right now. Right now I'm going to put it back up even though, because i got to find some metal to do that with. But I want it to stay together while I hold it and, and outline it and get the rough key made for it. I'm going to be using the jet engine grinder to rough profile it down and then hand files to finish the, the key off. So we're going to go into hyper quiet mode with cool music maybe just as soon as we mark this guy and uh, let's put that right there and go get a sharpie so now also i'm stopping it here on the edge right but if you look it's actually recessed a little bit so that's actually going to be to right about right about there and honestly it looks like it's pretty close on the inside edge we may have to trim that down a little bit but other than that we take into account the other side with it having that extra kind of lip and i'm thinking we're going to be somewhere in here we may have to take just a bit of this off and uh and then probably somewhere along like that we're gonna and then we're gonna have to cut cut the tip off to make it sit right all right so let's measure measure that may have gone a little too far with that so i'm gonna remember not to grind 
until I get to the uh, to that part. And then there, maybe a little thin. So I'm just gonna when I'm grinding, I'm gonna go by. I'm gonna go by the outside part here, and then the outside edge right there. So let's get started. Moving on to the vise and the hand files because we have it, we have it cut down about where we want it. Looks like we need to go maybe a little bit flatter on the tip. Uh, and then we have to cut our wards as well. So let's go ahead and get this guy clamped up. And how are we gonna do this? Let's do this like here. The key's a little bit too long to be able to clamp in uh, my cutter to do this but it's pretty easy with your hand files so again we have files that are have this and when you're looking for regular files just to use for stuff it's always always important to find files that have this edge on them because a lot of them don't and that is a really important part of making keys all right now i'm going to use the edge to go ahead and put our uh ward in there it was closer to the tip of the key it wasn't all the way up but it was like just a little bit not exactly halfway but kind of halfway and uh, it'll be okay to use the width of this file to pass that ward by the way when i'm filing i know i know it doesn't do anything but like i'm lifting up and i'm pushing like when i'm pulling back i'm just using it as a guide so for those of you who want to so like hard and then off hard off hard off i'm just doing it fast okay so there's one side Get this side uh, evened out. Now the other side of this is smooth, so we can uh, we can safely use it against this without it cutting into the shoulder. Okay, and go back about right about the same area. see what that does let's see if it's fitting and if it's not we need to discover why Um, 
So it appears to be hitting on this front side. Need to go, need to go down right there. Both sides. cleared our wards. Now it's just a matter of uh, cutting cutting that center down. If we remember, it has to. We feel it springy. Watch. So that means we're hitting the lever and we're passing the bolt, which is good. If it rigid stopped right there, that means you're hitting the bolt. But because we've got this spring, that means that we're contacting the lever which is good and uh and these keys actually will pick it up fairly well but if we remember right there see it's telling us that we need to be cut right there so to do that i'm going to put it in clamp it up and uh go it it sideways with a thinner version lifting up and I'm pressing down make it a little bit wider because that lever was just a little bit wider than the file let's see if that's deep enough Still a little bit tough. May need to go deeper. It's trying to it's trying to send it out. We may need to go a little bit wider. 
because what it may be deep enough but it may just be catching on the side and we can again look look at that no it's pressing directly in the center there so we just need to go a little bit deeper maybe a little bit wider a little bit not too much but mostly deeper center there needs uh needs a, just a couple of swipes we're going to finish it up with a even smaller file once we get the where we need to be with it oh beautiful it's got a good stop Yeah, beautiful, long enough to go through the thickness of the door. And uh, yeah, perfect, actually. Let's go ahead and uh, check it in the other one. Make sure, because even though they look to be the same, I'm just gonna double check the key. And we do have to go ahead and smooth this out. So we're gonna do that real quick. Let me make this, let me make this one even with this one. Just for the aesthetics. Uh, just for the aesthetics. And while we're here, we can begin chamfering the edges a little bit. Oh, no, we're going to move over and do that. Mainly because my little file was over here. But we do want to kind of smooth off these sharp edges. There's no real need for the edges to be sharp like this. Having them kind of angled over or rounded, I guess you could say, makes them work just a bit smoother. And let's get rid of the flashing from that cut on both sides. Good, good, check it from both sides. And uh, I think we're good except for finding a little piece of metal for that. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. Spring steel, we need locksmith spring steel again, y'all. But anyway, that's how you make a key for these guys. Pretty simple one lever lock. I think this nose may, let's see. Well, it doesn't really matter if that nose sticks out that much because uh because it, it does go all the way through the door so so that's okay if it was flat on the door then we would maybe cut that down a bit 
as is. It's not hurting anything. I don't know. It looks kind of silly. Let's cut it down. Check the other one. Make sure the key works in it as well. Ooh, it does. Key to like. And uh, yeah, the what we need for this guy was spring steel, and I don't really have a lot. See, while I was looking for spring steel, I was going to say I do have plenty of it embedded between two layers of steel. So I could drill these rivets out and have a nice little section of spring steel to use for the inside of this guy. But I found what I think is going to be perfect. One of my last few strips of spring steel already pre-bent right here i don't think it's bent in the right place but yeah we're gonna take this guy apart real quick make sure it's i think it looks looks like it's even wide enough to do what it needs to do may have to grind it a little bit but we'll see we'll see all right careful careful yep look at that is that gonna all right, so it needs to be ground down just a bit. And uh, then after we bend it, it should be like right, right, right in there. So we'll go ahead, go ahead and pre-bend it. Okay, you stay right there. Where's my little hammer? And cut it, and we'll be done. Because we'll have a convenient handhold to use. Only have to do one side to make it fit. So we'll do. too long let's see well that wasn't very even a little bit too long but we got the bend, right? Maybe. I'm gonna go grind that tip down. Is that it? Ah, almost. A little bit more. Is that it? Uh, a little bit more. Uh, my goodness. So close. But yeah, it just has to be. Hello. That's it. And uh, let's put it back together. As far as uh, anything else needed, we don't really need a lot. 
But what we can do is, uh, because it's got some rust going on in the bottom here. And uh, I want to surface treat that. So just for the surface treatment, we can use Houdini because it, what it'll do is it'll it'll give a, a protectant coating in there. It's not going to hurt anything at all. So we're just going to go ahead and do that with both of them and uh, sop up sop up some of this rust that decides to pour out just to get it out of there. And that'll kind of soak into the metal and maybe protect it from future rusting. Beautiful locks made really, really well. No branding, but we do have these numbers in here. All right, let's make sure that's down, 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 that's good. Let's see how well our new piece of metal works on it. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh, works better than, ah, looks a little bit better than it's supposed to. Ah, it just needs working. Just needs using. It'll, uh, it'll get easier and easier as they use it. Should get easier and easier as that metal pushes down and forms into itself. That's. Still, still a little, little stiff. Let's see if we can't correct it by just giving it a gentle tap in there to flatten out. May have to, uh, may have to shorten it a little bit more because when you flatten it out, it obviously gets longer. So let's just give it a go. We don't want it to be, we don't want it to be too difficult to deal with. We need to be careful whacking on this too. No. Uh, um, okay, let's put this here. And, okay. Just a little whack. Did it make it too long? Didn't make it too long. Ah, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh, we lost it. Where'd it go? Oh, how did you fall over? Get back, get back where you're supposed to be. How did that fall over? I'm kind of worried about that. Shouldn't have fallen out. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's jumping out, y'all. Jumping out. We need to put that bend back into it. I don't know why it's jumping out on us. Don't want that to happen once it gets on the door, though. Ooh, that's a, that's a mighty fine bend right there.
not upside down. There we go. All right, let's double check that a few more times to make sure it's not gonna fall out on us. Maybe that's why it's missing. Maybe this one is just not destined to stay. Okay, I think we're okay now. Okay, seems to be okay. There we have it, making keys for these antique surface mount, rim mount, whatever locks. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments, or if you can't find a locksmith to do this in your area, uh, send us an email. I'll put the link in the description, and we do this every day. We're a little bit backed up right now, but we're knocking them out one by one, so we should be clear again to take anything in anybody needs to send. Thanks again for watching, y'all. We'll catch you next video.